On September 23rd of 2009, there was a moderately significant limb failure on a eucalyptus tree. My name is Blair Glenn, and I am an ISA certified arborist. It was a fairly hot day when this happened, but there was no wind. It was a reasonably large tree, and it was growing over someone's driveway in a homeowner's association and blocked the people in. Fortunately, nobody was hurt, and it didn't hit any vehicles. What I found so interesting about this particular failure is, I, is there was no decay associated with the break. I looked very closely through the wood and could not find any evidence of, of white fungus or any strands of decay or any injuries, nothing that would have uh, led me to understand why this limb broke. Now it's not a giant eucalyptus tree, but the limb was large enough and heavy enough to have uh, killed somebody or caused some significant damage. The association is so concerned that they asked me for an estimate to remove the tree. Now I didn't really see a reason to remove the tree, but then again, I couldn't see a reason why that particular limb failed in the first place. When I looked up into the tree to see where the, the limb failed from, I again saw an area that did not seem like it should have failed. Once again, I looked all the way around the, the branch and I, I could not find any old wounds or, or any reason why, I, why this limb would have just snapped the way it did. Now the heat was a direct cause, I believe and the fibers of the wood were very very dry which also surprised me because it was planted in a lawn area that was over watered so why was the why was the wood so dry in the first place i know there was an awful lot of weight maybe this tree is a dry environment tree that doesn't really like to have as much foliage as it produced maybe the lawn was a detriment to the tree and it grew too heavy so I looked closely at the limb on the ground to see if there was a lot of old wounds that may have added to contributing more, um, more growth and more uh, foliage you know, from re-sprouting. And, and there were some pruning cuts, but not an excessive number. The pruning cuts were made throughout the tree in, in reasonable locations, and, and I'm sure that they were done for end weight reduction. Um, Somebody believed that this tree was too heavy, and um, rightly so, it was too heavy. That cut might have been just a little bit too close, but uh, the wounds were all closed up. And uh, for the most part, uh, other than the fact that the, the limb was extremely heavy, I couldn't see any reasons up in the upper canopy uh, portion of the failed limb either. There were lots of little pole printer cuts throughout the tree to once again to reduce the, the, the weight of the branch. Uh, probably more weight should have been taken off. There's one that sticks out just a little bit too far, but when you deal with pole printer cuts it's oftentimes hard to uh, make really close cuts. So my conclusion. Um, I believe, and this is just a theory, that eucalyptus trees grow in a drier environment for a reason. And when we plant a eucalyptus tree in a wet environment with additional irrigation, they oftentimes grow too fast. They grow bigger than they normally would with more weight than they could normally sustain. So I believe that this is a, a cultural problem here by putting the wrong tree in the wrong place. Uh, I'm still going to recommend that they prune the tree, but I'm going to recommend that they prune it more often. Uh, in order to keep this tree here, they're going to have to keep it lighter and um, reduce some of the end weight. Uh, once again, my name is Blair Glenn. I am an ISA certified arborist.